Won't you lend your lungs to me? Mine are collapsing. Plant my feet and bitterly breathe up the time that's past. Breath I'll take and breath I'll give. Pray the day's not poised. Stand among the ones that live in lonely indecision. <laughs> I'm Robert Ma, captain of one of the research vessels for R&R &R Marine. This is my 43rd year fishing in Alaska. Uh, when I was 24, 25, I was gone every summer, so I had to find a way to either to quit fishing so I spend time with my family or get my family to come fishing with me. Thank goodness it was the second. <laughs> my grandpa did it, and most of my aunts and uncles, and especially my dad did it, and so I started doing it after my eighth grade year. It's kind of cool that you get to do this experience that nobody really gets to do. Bristol Bay is one of the largest salmon fisheries in the world. The challenge the state has is how do you find out what's going to come to your river so you can let the fishermen fish so the resource isn't wasted. So our job with the Ocean Cat is like a scout. This is definitely the riskiest contract that we have between all of our different boats. We're out in the middle of nowhere with near to no support for 40 days. If safety was first, I'd never get on a boat. Right, I'd sit at home in a bubble, right? I mean, you can't, you can't run a business and say safety first. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna try to head a little bit closer to the 15 and 22. Trying for right in the middle of it. It was a 30 mile an hour winds right now, and we're hiding from weather, but it might pass over this evening or tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens. Stakes of life and death are very all too real, on, especially offshore on a boat, because it's just in a matter of an instance and it could be all gone. I wouldn't put my crew in a position I wouldn't put myself in. Of course, every captain's gonna feel pressure. You need to be able to think straight when things are a little crooked and, you know, really be able to fix those problems. You know, I like being in positions where a lot of people won't be able to handle themselves. To be out here, it takes, you know, they say a jack of all trades and what, master of none or something. I think I've heard that. Sometimes we're hundreds of miles from help. So what does it take to be out here? You gotta be an electrician, you gotta be a plumber, you gotta be, really the answer is you gotta solve problems. And it helps having like people who've done it together come back, like especially Connor and Hayden. So you know, you get that cohesion together, kind of sets the tone for how it is on the boat. So we're on the transect of Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea. All right, go ahead. We are the first boat to intercept the Bristol Bay sockeye salmon run, and we're setting a net every 10 miles to survey the amount of fish that are going into the bay. In Bristol Bay, there's five regions of rivers where the fish are returning to. So what we catch on like June 20th, they scale that up and that's how many fish you can expect to catch in that district. It's essentially a forecast of what's to come in the bay. From the genetics data, other commercial fishermen can see that and kind of get a rough estimate of where the fish are going to be this year, where the run is going. So we're the eyes and ears for the state of Alaska for determining what's coming at them and how fast. So the genetics help the Alaska Department of Fish and Game manage the Bristol Bay sockeye run because you can't have too few fish getting in river, meaning like too many people are catching them. 
And you can't have too many fish in river because then they'll spawn on top of each other. Because we are scientists first and foremost, and so we're trying to be scientific. But there's thousands of families that rely on, on the data that I do. And so if I decide to sleep in on my bunk because it's a little too rough out, that information that I lose or I didn't get, now there's thousands of families that don't have a chance to go catch fish. It gives you that sense of fulfillment because you know you're supporting thousands of different families' lives. Fishing especially is like you have to live with them as well. So you want to be able to enjoy yourself, you know, you want to be able to have a laugh. If you're not enjoying yourself out on boat, then it's just probably one of the shittiest jobs you could possibly be doing. Oh, they can teach me all the, the science and the fishing stuff, but you just have to have a good attitude. You're an Alaskan commercial fisherman, and it's badass. And out here in the sun, in the rain, in the fog, you're just dealing with it all, and you're making a lot of money, and <laughs> it's a good time with good people. I think it's really important to take pride in what you're doing out here. You can't go out there and half-ass it. People make the experience, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm grateful for everyone that's on here. Uh, it's made me smile a lot more than anything else. You really form a bond out here for 40 days with people. And like, you're meeting completely strangers at the start of it. But I mean, it's a week in and you're like best buddies with them. I mean, anywhere you have family with you, no matter where they are, it's going to feel like a little bit of them. As harsh as it may have seemed when I was nine years old, I was out in the ocean working and my friends were home playing the latest Atari or video games that were out then. I, I thought I had it hard, um, but now I realize that I had it pretty good. My father, he was the hardest working fella I've ever seen. He brought me to work along with him when I was growing up. Just made me realize like it has to be done. Either it's going to be you or somebody else. So it's either just put your head down and get it done or just let it go by you. Shoulders till I learn to lean and freeze. Your roaring smile, campfire lit up the trees. Oh, my girl, she's a silver bell. She pulls straight from the lawn. Just a kiss from your lips, and I'm ready to go.